engineer, and then we have a car. So we have an interview. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> they brought up from uh, Mazda, one of the main engineers for here in North America. And actually, I don't know, do you work for the other uh, market, like globally? Like, I guess you have to, some interaction, but well, mainly your product, them, yeah. your final product is here, right? Right, right. So I'm, yeah, I'm responsible for making sure that the cars drive right for our market. So I go and see what the other markets are doing, and, and then we yeah. argue about who's right, and we <laughs> and end up with like three or four different specs for the world, because all the different markets kind of have a different yeah, idea exactly. how the car should drive. And actually, uh, well, we've been here a couple of days in San Diego with Mazda and Dave and the rest of the team and like uh, during your presentation yesterday was very interesting to hear how the cars actually are like tuned completely different for each market huh? the way people really like them yeah yeah absolutely so we're here uh, for the first test drive of this car uh, actually two cars the, the second generation CX-5 right? that's right yep uh, which uh, the older one came not very long ago really it's been, uh, I think, about five years, yeah. and uh, it's been a huge success, much bigger than, than yeah. we planned for it to be. So, but usually the cycles are seven years, right? Like, why, why, why is everything getting shorter? I mean, competition, <laughs> like, uh, you want to push more product? I mean, technology is pushing yeah, you harder, I guess, too? We're pretty aggressive in how quickly we're trying to evolve our cars and our brand, and we actually are doing, not only are we updating the cars pretty frequently, but we're doing... Uh, sort of mid-cycle updates almost every year on every car. Yeah. So, like, there was a, a two, 2016 model. Then we did a bunch of changes for the 2016 and a half model, which is oh just God. before this. Wow. Um, and so there was, there was a big, we never stop improving. Never stop working. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because, I mean, uh, the cars are, like, running out of the production factories, like, of the production really, really fast. So. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about this. I mean, yesterday you have a very interesting, I'm not gonna say long, <laughs> <laughs> presentation, but it was like very, very complete design, uh, marketing, uh, driving, but any, I mean, we're gonna have like 10, 15 minutes, so I wanna try to make as much credit possible for that. But the, 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 the thing that caught more my attention, I think, was like, even though I've driven and talked to you several times, is that the emphasis that, that you guys put in doing things different but not different in a bad way different like in a, in a very good way because right. obviously your success is uh, the result of that so can you talk a little bit about that like how goes into producing like a mid-size crossover SUV where there's a huge competition and then still make it completely different from the rest of that yeah well we really focus instead of on, on looking at what everyone else is doing and trying to, to compete and do the same yeah. things we really try to focus on the human experience in the car and what do we need to do to make the interaction between the machine and the, and, the, and, the, and the person as good as possible. So we actually spend a lot of effort um, studying people and how people work and how people move uh, and that sort of infirms how we should make a car move and how we should make a car react to people. Yeah. Um, I mean, starting with the sitting position, which uh, from your presentation again yesterday, like it will be the ideal situation would be that I'll be floating, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, no gravity in space. Right. But well, you try to simulate that here. Yeah. So what, what we what we did with the driving position, there's you notice if you drive with a lot of different cars, they all have kind of very different seating positions. The steering wheels are far away or close or up or down. Yeah. And um, rather than you know just trying to get one guy's opinion of which one is the best, we really studied. You know what do all humans have in common? Where what's sort of the natural body position when there's no forces on you? And we actually studied astronauts uh, in yeah. space when they're floating, what joint angles they have, mm -hmm. and built the car and, and the driving position around being able to get to that. Because most that's a natural position, position right? right? Like that's, that's where just you the are most like, comfortable. Yeah. You're going to be in this position for a two or three hour drive. Yeah. You want to really be comfortable the whole time, and the more comfortable you are, the the more. Uh, energy you have left for paying attention to the road and reacting when you need to react so it, it ultimately you know makes you a better driver makes you safer yeah and then we go into the dynamics and the experience of driving the cars and enjoying the car like first like obviously through the senses like looking at it like feeling it touching it smelling it even <laughs> right like yeah. because you even like the, the new car smell you like you we, work with that we too. did a test where we had to smell like 22 different leather samples the final yeah. one that we thought smelled the best which uh, was a actually really hard to remember what was the 15th smell compared to the 22nd <laughs> smell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we go that deep, really trying to get the whole whole experience right. Yeah. Then uh, let's talk a little bit about the engine and like the regular things that 
the engine pretty much didn't change, right? From that it's past most, generation. It's mostly a carryover. So the 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 Sky Active uh, 2.5 liter. Um, it's we try to make all of our engines not only really efficient, uh, but really responsive and really direct. Uh, so that you, there's no lag when you step on the gas. And that engine has a really good balance of enough low end torque and a very smooth yeah. torque curve and really direct throttle response. So we made some really small changes uh, in inside the engine, to, mostly to the piston. Ones that I showed you, the piston, you can't literally cannot yeah. see the changes. They're microscopic, mm -hmm. um, but they reduce the friction and they make the make the engine uh, resist knocking better, so that we can tune it to be uh, and, have and better I, and I, response. Yeah, and I guess that like the level of attention to that detail that you cannot even see. Right. That that make it. That makes like the huge, huge difference. So I mean, how do you get to that point? I mean, how do you start like analyzing things to that level of changing something that you can't even see? I mean, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, we have we have sort of a, a, a restlessness where we're never really satisfied with yeah. where we're at. And so you know, the guys who are working on the piston and just keep looking at that one thing, you're like, oh, you know, we could do this a little bit better. We could do yeah. that a little bit better. And and we try to just, you know, as we come up with new things we can do, just roll them in uh, as quickly as, as we can. So yeah, we're, we never really stop development of the car. We'll start production. We're still working on what we're going to do next year. <laughs> and, you know, it, well, it must just be, never it stops. must be fun watching that. Like, I would be like really fun to see like a time lapse of that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, it makes a really complicated development schedule because I've got in my head stuff for five different years and all the different cars we're doing. That's another another great skill that you guys have. I, I don't have it for sure. But that's like organizing very complex thoughts uh, yeah. to begin with. But anyway, so like what's the horsepower? What's the performance numbers for this car? So the, the the peak numbers, I think it's 187 horsepower and 184, 185 yeah. pounds of torque. But really, um, you know, the difference between this version of the engine and, and last year's engine, those numbers are almost exactly the same. Yeah. I think it went up two or three horsepower at the peak. But uh, the drive, the way the car drives in, in normal driving is quite a bit different because we focused on the, the response delay, how quickly it downshifts, yeah, like the yeah. shift points are, and you know, in real world driving, those those peak numbers don't mean that much. They sort of determine sort of the cap of the most you're going to be able to get out of it yeah. but most of the time you're not at full throttle what matters is when I give it a little bit of gas how long do I have to wait before it actually Immediate does something response, yeah. and, and we're worried about milliseconds thousands of a second um, we figured out that, that humans can detect a, a response delay of about a quarter of a second and so we try to get all of our response delays under a quarter of a second so that people don't feel any delay they just feel connected to the car yeah. And this is a crossover, so like a family car, five room for five people, all yeah. cargo space and all that. But also it's a Mazda, so you have to have like the excitement of driving it, the fun of driving it. Yeah. And, and you get, I mean, I have to say it. I mean, we drove it yesterday for like two, three hours, and yeah. it's, it's, it's it's an engaging car to drive. I mean, it, the, the steering is really direct, the, the throttle response also. And even though it's not it's not a sports car, but you can get that that feeling. You can still have fun with it. Absolutely, yeah. 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 One thing I have to say, and I was missing, I wish there were like a little bit of <laughs> the paddle shifters. <laughs> yeah, I have to say it. Yeah, we keep going back and forth on whether we should do that because we don't. Will anybody actually use them? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you can actually put them on. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if we just buy the paddles and put them on there, I think the wiring is probably there. <laughs> okay, that, that, that's a thought. So another thing that you guys do very different is uh, the way um, you not only benchmark or compare cars because here we are. And actually, you have a separate presentation on top of the two-hour presentation <laughs> in the morning for yeah, the cars that you were were going to compare with. Right. And like most people, when they go actually shopping for this car, would probably never think about a Lexus uh, NX 200T, uh, BMW X1, um, Mercedes-Benz GLA, and the what's the other one? Uh, Audi Q3. Oh, the Audi Q3. Yeah. So most people will probably compare a Mazda with the Toyota, a Honda, and something. But that's another thing that you are very confident because of your work. Of yeah. What you can compare it to. I mean, you're going a, sec a level that uh, higher than yeah, most people would think. We're really of. trying to push our cars up to that to that level, and we're actually seeing a lot. Our dealers see a lot of people trading in BMWs and Audis and such yeah. on, on these cars. So I think that that plan uh, is working out. Um, so yeah, we don't we don't spend a lot of time 
when we're developing the car, we actually don't spend a lot of time uh, benchmarking the other cars either. We really just focus on what do what does the driver need and what what the people in the car really need to enjoy the car, and build up some from sort of fundamental truths about people, yeah. right? Uh, and then we we bring in the competitors at the end, and say, oh, okay, how did we do? And, and uh, you know, we were pleasantly surprised about how our car drove compared to the BMW. And again, car. I have to say, it, I drove uh, I, I drove all of them, but like. I drove the GLA first. I mean, mm. it's a great car still. I like, but then you get it, and then like, because what completes the story is when you go to the pricing, which is the bottom line. <laughs> right, like, right. people are gonna make the decisions, and and when you think about like, this car, I think top price is about thirty-seven, right? Yeah. Right. So, fully loaded with tons of technology, safety technology, leather, and like really nice materials and all that. And then the other cars, you go, yeah, they're nice cars, but like really, you have to pay a lot more. And really where we find the difference is because we focus so much on the, the directness and controllability of the car's response, um, a lot of a lot of those cars, um, you know, first step on the gas, there's a little hesitation and yeah. kind of a surge. And they're, they're, they're focusing on different things with those cars, obviously. Every, every different car company has sort of their different approach to, to doing cars. Um, but from our viewpoint of how we think a car should, should react to a person and how controllable it should be, um, we see a big gap uh, where we're, we think we're doing that better than those guys are. Excellent. Well, uh, this was a very short, again, uh, yeah. drive of the car, like a couple of miles, in, like, but um, again, we drove it yesterday for over 200 miles on the road and on the city, and really, I mean, it's, it's an amazing car, and uh, I think one of the things that Mazda, another challenge that probably you have is like, a lot of people, I mean, you're doing great, but you could do it even better if people, <laughs> more people get into your cars. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, the challenge, especially as, you know, our brand is moving, uh, you know, if people haven't paid attention to Mazda in 10 years, they're going to be really surprised about what we're building yeah. now because we're building such a better car than we did 10 years ago. So for people who pay attention to the industry, the, it's, it's not a big surprise. But yeah. There's a lot of people who, who just aren't even considering us. And our challenge is to get them in the driver's seat and just feel this. And yeah. I think that, that'll convince them. Well, but this, that's a really, uh, this is a really good test for that. And uh, people watching and really should like, at least, as you said, t give it a chance. <laughs> right. Take a look, you know. So uh, one more thing, because a lot of people are asking me, what happened to Mazda Speed? Uh, you know, it's one of those things that when we when we have the right pieces in place that we can yeah. build a good Mazda Speed car, we still want to do that. But there's not one in the market right now. There right? isn't, like there isn't the, one the in the Mazda market 3 right was, now. Uh, or the Mazda 3 or even the Miata. The MX-5. Okay. Right. So yeah, usually when we do a Mazda Speed car, it's it's because we, you know, we okay, look, we have this car and we have this power and we have all the, the sort of yeah. pieces in place that we can do it. They're a, they're a really low volume car, so we want to okay. execute all our cars at a certain level, but you can't, we can't afford to develop like a whole new engine for a car for we're only going to make ten thousand of. So um, we kind of whenever the parts that we have line up in a way that we can execute something good enough uh, to wear that badge, then we do it. Um, but we don't we don't have the pieces in place at the moment. So well, thank you very much today for everything, and uh, I'm sure you are gonna go back and keep working on the next car. <laughs> yep. And the we next person. We never stop. <laughs> thank you very much. You bet.